For the longest time, food prices remained stable in the United States and consumers were not particularly concerned about price fluctuations each month. Even though there were readjustments to the cost of staples every year, those increases weren't exactly alarming, and back then one could say they were truly temporary. Our supermarkets were packed with food, and something that always made grocers proud was their ability to ensure an enormous variety for their customers. But now we can see that things are a whole lot different, and not in a good way. As the world tries to rebound from the global recession induced by the health crisis, a massive wave of inflation is dramatically hitting agricultural commodities, and food producers are having to pass those cost increases to consumers. However, many industry experts have been warning that the recent price hikes won't be the only ones. In fact, they are marking the beginning of a prolonged era of higher prices and low supply. This means that although we're already facing some painful food inflation, prices won't get any lower than they are at this moment for a long, long time. And when we look forward, several events that are unfolding right now will likely combine and contribute to the acceleration of food price inflation in the coming months. In view of such a scary scenario, the best way to fight inflation is to get prepared in advance. That's why today we've brought five specific reasons why you should start stockpiling food as soon as you can. Number one, in a telling sign of what is coming for us in the months ahead, recent reports have been describing that supermarkets are feverishly stockpiling food in anticipation of the coming inflationary spike. According to the Wall Street Journal, several supermarket chains have started to stock up on everything from sugar to frozen meat before they get more expensive, bracing for what some executives anticipate will be some of the highest price increases in recent memory. The move is a reversal from what happened last year when millions of panic buyers hoarded groceries because of concerns about food availability, triggering supply chain disruptions, and acute shortages all across the country. Now, retailers themselves are buying and storing supplies to keep their shelves full amid stronger demand. In that way, they can have more control over rising costs and protect their profit margins. According to Jeffries and Nielsen IQ data, in the weekend of June 19th, grocery sales went up by 15% as compared to last year. However, some grocery industry executives highlighted that the recent stockpiling trend by food retailers is already causing shortages of some staples and stressing even further that a U.S. food supply chain already squeezed by transportation costs, labor pressure, and ingredient constraints. Last year, after waves of panic buying literally wiped out grocery shelves, several food retailers tried to stockpile some goods to meet the growing demand. But that was nothing compared to what we are witnessing right now. Some companies revealed they've been purchasing up to 25% more food than normal. For instance, David Smith, the CEO of America's largest wholesaler, Associated Wholesale Grocers, told in an interview that they've been buying 15 to 20% more goods, mostly packaged foods with long shelf lives. Smith said, we're buying a lot of everything. Our inventories are up significantly over the same period last year. In Michigan, food retailer Sparta Nash bought up roughly 20 to 25% more than normal, including frozen meat. In essence, grocers are predicting that inflation is about to soar, and the cost of essentials like bacon and milk will rise by up to 14%. Sparta Nash CEO Tony Sarson said the uniquely inflationary period has caused a feeding frenzy. And the best alternative to keep protected from skyrocketing prices is to buy and store staple products before they get too pricey. For that reason, some chains are even expanding their warehouse space so they can stock up on even more goods 
That's the case of our whole Del Hayes USA, which runs the food line and stop and shop chains, already bought 20% more stock of paper and cleaning products. The latest price increases at the stores and the need to stockpile come as several key factors of pushing up costs all the way from farm to store. But one thing is certain, when inflation starts to run out of control, these companies will conveniently keep the prices of their products significantly higher, even though they've been stocking up on inventory before prices of inventory rises. When food retailers start to brace for the worst of inflation, that, of course, is not a good sign for consumers. So it seems like a good option to start stockpiling too before essential products become unaffordable. Number two, if you think your purchasing power has considerably collapsed over the past 12 months, we're sorry to say the value of your dollars is going to decay even further, as a new government spending bill of trillions of dollars is already being proposed by the new administration. Since the money hose started to flood financial markets with giant piles of freshly printed dollars, the government doesn't seem to have an off button to stop this reckless spending, and Federal Reserve is ready to finance another costly fiscal stimulus plan, despite the fact that our national debt is moving up towards the $29 trillion mark very rapidly. Therefore, a dramatic reversal of our current monetary policy seems very unlikely. This relentless flow of new money will continue to push food prices sky high. Number three, with gas prices hitting record highs every month, it's become way more expensive to transport food around the country. Supply transportation costs have already been going up due to a national shortage of drivers, but now that gas prices rose 56% compared to a year ago, those increases will also impact food prices. Now, last Friday, the AAA gas price index pegged the national average gas price at $3.086. That's up from $2.171 one year ago. As a consequence, several companies, including cereal maker General Mills, Hormel Foods, Kimberly Clark, announced plans to pass along those costs to consumers. General Mills CEO Jeff Harmoning said at a recent investor conference that the inflation pressure they're seeing is off the charts. It's probably higher than we've seen in the last decade, he said. Number four, the ruthless mega drought in the Western states just continues to get worse. If you take a quick look at the latest US drought monitor map, what you'll see is truly alarming. We haven't experienced such an extreme drought since the Dust Bowl days of the 1930s. And in many states, water levels are dropping dangerously low. For instance, the water level in the Great Salt Lake is expected to hit a 170-year low this summer. At this point, most parts in the U.S. West are already bracing for a brutal wildfire season and coping with already low reservoirs. In Utah, Governor Spencer Cox is begging residents to stop lawn watering and start, quote, praying for rain, unquote. However, for the Great Salt Lake, this is only another challenge. For years, people have been diverting water from rivers that flow into the lake to water crops and supply homes. Because the lake is shallow, less water is quickly translating into receding shorelines. And since there isn't enough water for everyone, millions of farmers are having to dramatically reduce the number of crops that are currently growing. Amongst them, small farmer Mindy Pegovich revealed she had to abandon crops in six of the seven acres where she grows produce. But she's having doubts whether she'll even have enough water for that. Pekovic used to grow items like turnips, squash, and tomatoes for the local market, but this summer, she was forced to cut her crops down to less than a single acre. She said, we don't know if we're going to have water to keep that alive. Financially, I can't really even express how dramatic it's changed in the last couple years water-wise, because without water, we can't grow crops, and without crops, we have nothing to sell to our consumers. All of this means that our domestic agricultural production will be much lower than originally anticipated this year, 
and undoubtedly that will also add pressure on food prices in the coming months. And number five, on top of all of that, a devastating plague of grasshoppers is now causing massive headaches for our farmers in western states. The exceedingly hot and dry weather conditions are ideal for grasshoppers to reproduce and for their eggs to hatch and grow into adulthood. So their population has been multiplying like crazy over the past couple of months. In some areas, the swarms are so big that looking from above, it can appear the earth is moving. Sometimes the swarms are just so thick, they actually appear on radar. Grasshoppers are insatiable eaters. They can devastate entire crops in a matter of hours. Helmuth Rock, an entomologist and agricultural scientist who works for the Oregon Department of Agriculture, said the biggest biomass consumer in the country, not cattle, not bison, they are grasshoppers. They eat and eat from the day they get born until the day they die. That's all they do. Many local farmers already started to report extremely painful crop losses. John O'Keefe, the cattle rancher, whose Eastern Oregon ranch disclosed that the bugs basically ate all the forage. Meanwhile, Tyler Lorenz, a sixth-generation rancher near Oregon's border with California, outlined that grasshoppers are a kind of a neat bug, kind of like a pack, but when they go through a field, they will just completely wipe out everything that's there. The damage that they do when they come into crops is just absolutely horrific. So far, Oregon and Montana have been hardest hit by the insect plague, particularly in the arid eastern flank of both states. But 15 other states are also facing grasshopper damage, and that's according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. All combined, the 17 states suffering from this pest have recorded a loss in agricultural produce of $8.7 billion. The U.S. Department of Agriculture started a program to suppress the plague with huge pesticide sprays. But even though the spraying may reduce the plague, the experts agree it will not stop it. In other words, grasshoppers will continue to decimate our crops on a massive scale for many months. And that's not only a sign of higher food prices, but also signals that food shortages are on their way. All things considered, our long-term outlook is rather gloomy and, to be honest, quite scary. Each of these factors will severely impact our food supply chain and all of them are going to combine to drive prices to levels never seen before. If someone still believes inflation is going to be transitory, we're sorry to say that what we've seen so far has been just the tip of the iceberg. So if you don't want to get caught off guard by shortages and explosive prices, you should stock up on supplies you need before they're long gone. Thank you for watching. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. We look forward to reading them. And don't forget to check out Michael Snyder's latest book. It's called Last Prophecies of the Future of America which is now available in paperback and for the Kindle on Amazon. In the meantime, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to keep tuned to our next videos.